Broncos trying to win at the home of a BCS team for the first time in school history. Ian Johnson will take it at the eight. Across the 30 to the 33-yard line, Ian Johnson and the Broncos will have good field position. Kellen Moore is the quarterback beginning his third game as a Division I football player. Of course, he's got a lot of fans in this area as well. The redshirt freshman brings his offense onto the field. No interceptions so far as he begins his third game as a start. Broncos at their own 32-yard line to begin this game. And already, this crowd is already starting to feel. Fake to Johnson. Deep for Avery, who was held up. Looked like he was held. Yeah, Kellen Moore had to hurry his throw. Boise State has Jeremy Childs and Titus Young in the lineup for the first time together since 10 months ago. On the offensive line, the key, led by Andrew Woodruff, keep off the back of Kellen Moore, and you saw a sign of what might be to come on that first play. Yeah, trying to go immediately to Jeremy Childs there, trying to hit the home run on the first game, on the first play of the game. Second and 10. More in the shotgun. Drops. That defensive line features Nick Reed, who uh, is undersized, but is on fire on the watch list of four different awards. Linebackers led by sophomore Spencer Pacinger having a breakout season. And maybe the best secondary the Broncos have ever faced, led by the great rover Patrick Chung. Broncos did not want to get into a third and long situation today against the Ducks, and that's where they find themselves in their opening drive. Empty backfield. Moore has the first down. The Broncos going quickly here in the no huddle, working against Jarris Bird, the great left corner. Got a pretty good spot there, Tommy. Ian Johnson, the lone man in the backfield. That's Pettis in motion. Johnson taken down at the line of scrimmage. Taken down in 10 now. And the shotgun is Kellen Moore. Complete for a five-yard pickup. And there you see a very quick defensive backfield for the Ducks get to Vinny Peretta immediately. Spencer Paceford now in motion goes Hawkins. Third and four. Just out of the reach of Kyle Efa, who had gotten behind the cover. Jarris Bird is the deep man. He's the guy who had the long punt return last week for the touchdown against Purdue. Jarris Bird at his own eight. Jarris Bird finally brought down at the 15. That kid was all over the place. Illegal slate. formation. Offense. Six men on the line. Receiving team is elected to have that penalty enforced at the end of their run back. Five yards, first down. will take over. Jeremiah Johnson in the backfield. And he's got the ball. Across the 20 to the 25-yard line goes Jeremiah Johnson, the senior, senior out of L.A. Backs and receivers for the University of Oregon. Watch for tight end and H-back combo. Ed Dixon today, he will be big for the Ducks. Along the offensive line, they are led by All-American Max Unger, who started every game of his duck career. A great one. Soli now in the shotgun on a second and six. Jared Johnson. Knocked out, but not until he picks up seven. Along the front linebackers, there's uh, Daryl Acre in there, and we will see how that develops today in the secondary. Kyle Wilson will have to be a short ch tackler along with his friends. Soli. Across the middle is complete. There's a penalty marker down. The passer. Defense, number 18. Penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. 15 yards, first down. That's a big one against Ellis Power. The passer, and that's going to tack on 15. That is not what Pete wanted to see. Oh, boy. That, that was a vicious hit by Ellis Power. First down for the Ducks after the Bronco punt. Broncos in the nickel with George Iloka, the extra man. Johnson. In trouble. Nowhere to go. Of one fake to Johnson. That was fumble, fumble, and incomplete. Now they're calling it incomplete. Terrence Scott. And once again, they're going to call this an incompletion. Watch Sean Bingham on the play. Great job by Bingham to come over and cover. And Tim Brady 
Masoli is still in there as quarterback. Taken down after a gain of three, and that's six yards shy of the first down. This would be a field goal of uh, 40, 52 yards, and they're going to try it. The place kicker is Matt Evenson. He's a Lou Groza semifinalist back last year. This will be a 53 yard. It's long this season, 41. And that is well short. Jeremy Avery on the screen. Sets up a second down and four now for the Broncos. Moore drops the ball, has to fall on it, skipped it back, and Moore had no choice. Actually low and skipped off the hands of Kellen Moore. That's the, first, that's the first bad shotgun snap of the year. And here comes the Autzen crowd. Titus Young splits out wide to the right side. Austin Pettis wide to the strong side of the field on a third and nine in the shotgun for Kellen Moore. Steps up. O'Neal is going to be shy of the first down by about two yards, and the Broncos will punt. Standing at his own 31-yard line. It's a low one that bounces at the 22, and they'll down it inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. And that's Jeremiah Johnson across the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here we see Chris Harper in for the first time today. He is a true freshman now in Wichita, Kansas. Everybody will think run. Let's see if that's the way it pans out, though. He's only attempted six passes, and he gives up the middle to Jeremiah Johnson, who has the first down to the 33-yard line. Chris Harper is the true freshman, backs up Jeremiah Masoli, who, as I mentioned, was in community college ranks last year, so they don't have a quarterback on the on this team that's been here more than eight months. But they're learning quickly. Both of them have played in all three of the Ducks' first games. Harper, once again, Johnson to the 36-yard line, and that'll be a second down and five. They call it now second and seven at the 26. Johnson. Great tackle there at the 37-yard line. Chris Harper staying in the ball game, And once again, Tom, you would think your run, but we'll see. Johnson looking for a hole across the 45-yard line to the 46, and that's a first down. Yellow shirted Ducks instead of white shirted Broncos. You see him stuck there behind his own guys until he sees the crease. The Ducks with their second possession of the day at the 46-yard line. That's Masoli. Masoli looks for that type of thing. He's a great scrambler, tucks it and runs. Uh, the Ducks are down, of course, to their third and fourth quarterbacks this season. That brings up a second and one now. And that's Blunt. Blunt is taken down by Kyle King, but there's Blunt again, this time hit and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Great job in the middle there. Sean Bigham and Mike T. Williams. He was the junior college player of the year last year. Blunt was out of East Mississippi Community College, and Harper is back in the game now. Second down and eight. Blunt to the 40, to the 35. Jeremiah Johnson in the backfield. He's got it and taken down, and it depends on the spot. Can the Bronco D pull off the stop right here? We'll see. The blitz is on. Johnson has the first down. And uh, Johnson wisely ran over left guard behind Jordan Holmes to get just enough. Working now at the Bronco 27-yard line. Johnson again looks for a hole and doesn't find one. Second down and 11. Masoli. Over the middle is Dixon. And he has a first down to the Bronco 12, uh, 17 yard line. On that play, Jerron Johnson coming up after Tim Brady and Ellis Powers tried initial coverage. And the Ducks now in a first and 10 at the Bronco 17. Out of the shotgun is Masoli. Hand off is Blunt. Jumps over a man at the 10. Blunt into the end zone for a duck touchdown.
and we'll see the matchup. And they decide to go for two. Pitch back. Stopped. I think they, they pitched it back to the kicker, Matt Evenson, and he took a heck of a hit at the end of that play. We asked Pete if he thinks he's going to do the swing and gate. He said, sure, why not? And they stop it. 6 nothing. He'll take it at his own three with a hole. Gets it across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Looked good for a moment, but it closed in a hurry for Ian Johnson. And the Broncos with their third chance on offense today. Harper. Big hole for D.J. Harper and a gain of nine across the 35 to the 36-yard line. First carry in the first quarter this season for D.J. Harper, who didn't get a carry in the opener until the fourth quarter. Second and two at the 35. Kellen Moore for Titus Young. And there's a penalty marker down on the field. And Jackson running him to the outside. Defense number 37, 15-yard penalty will be enforced in the previous slot. First down. Now you see that left hand in there, although Duck fans wanted the call on Titus Young, who was just trying to get to the ball. Brockle in the tight end set. Fake to Ian on the screen. Brockle across the... 30 to the 29, dropped it for a moment, but picked it back up, and that's a gain of 20. What a great call that time by the Broncos. Broncos starting, lined up as a fullback, shifts into the tight end spot, play action with the rush coming, and Brockel, great yards after catch there, down to the 29-yard line of order. And this is a little more like it. Ian Johnson, the lone setback. Johnson moves the pile, trying to get something on the board, trying to answer the Ducks. Moore, set. The two bookends on that Oregon defensive line. Nick Reed is the guy they were talking about yesterday here in Eugene. He's undersized, but boy, he can motor. Number 49. And the Broncos were trying to set up a screen on the right. As Matt Slater released his block, it never had a chance. 19 yards to go for the first down. Broncos will see if they can get something going. Draw to Ian Johnson. Tripped up at the 39-yard line, 34-yard uh, line by Tukuafu once again. This would be a career long, though. His career long, 47. No win. Good snap, good hold. Kick is long enough, and it is good. The sophomore from Meridian High School has been money and since he signed on. Puts his leg into it, he goes out the back of the end zone. Jeremiah Masoli is the quarterback in the shotgun for the Ducks. Gets back to Jeremiah Johnson. And he is wrestled and shoved out of bounds by Jerron Johnson, who has been so huge in the first couple of games for the Broncos. Uh, Jerron Johnson has talked about being physical, a high school linebacker in Compton, California. Uses speed to get to Jeremiah Johnson. This is a physical mismatch, but Johnson gets Johnson to go out of bounds. Loss of one on the play, second down and 11 for the Ducks. Once again, Johnson. And he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And he's taken down for a loss of two. Great pursuit initially by George Iloka there. Second quarter. Johnson stopped at the 23-yard line. The Ducks will punt. Zyree hits it off the side of his foot. And they are going to mark this deep in Duck territory. They're marching to the 35, to the 30. He he's is still marching. Going. He's still going at the 26-yard line. Broncos with a big break here. Let's see what they can do with it. Kellen Moore behind center. Johnson hit at the line, and he'll be well taken down for a loss of two. Low snap again for Kellen Moore. Over the middle. 
O'Neal has a pickup of about seven, but it'll be a third down and four. Uh, such great presence of mind there by Moore. Great coverage by the Ducks secondary. Nobody knew open. where the first, uh, where the uh, line of scrimmage was and delivered the ball right before he got there to O'Neal. Just making something happen. That's what Kellen Moore does. He'll look off three receivers before he hits his valve. Third down and four. Childs to the 10. That is going to be a first and goal. Great protection this time for Kellen Moore. John got Thomas Bird and Andrew Woodruff forcing, uh, forging that. 11.40 left to play in this half. Johnson to the 10 and hit at the line of scrimmage. Right side is the short side of the field. Strong side to the left. And that's where Titus Young moves out along with Austin Pettis. Second and goal at the 9. Kellen Moore out of the shotgun, the red shirt, freshman quarterback. Into the end zone, all alone, touchdown, Broncos! Tommy Gallarda. Ah, the Broncos are going wild in the end zone, and they have taken the lead on the 17th-ranked Oregon Ducks. Casey Matthews defended Gallarda on that play and just gave him window dressing coverage. And it's perfect. Boise State is up 10 to 6. Well, Harper's in now, so it's unlikely, but not impossible. Harper to give up the middle of the block again. Still on his feet. Finally taken down, but not until he gets into Bronco territory at the 45-yard line. Kyle King was just kind of riding it on his back. At the line of scrimmage. Hey, that's, that's not going to stop Blunt. They're just waving at him, and... Kyle King finally hangs on for dear life. Once again, Blunt. This time, they finally stop him. And once again, King was there, and he knocks him down after a gain of only one. This is a second down and eight now. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line for the Ducks. Keeper. And Chris Harper keeps it. He's shy of the first down by about two. Ellis Powers dragged him down at the 37. And a flag on the, the field. Formation. formation. Offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay. Second down. Making close to four million dollars a year here. and There's a very good reason for that. Phil Knight lives down the street. Jeremiah Johnson hit in the backfield. Manages to get to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than 8.56 to go here in the first half. Johnson with blockers, but he fumbled the ball for a moment, but knocked out at the 42-yard line, and that's going to be well shot. They, they do have State. They've got it. Take a look at this again, Tommy. That's Jeremiah Johnson here. Can you see Kyle oh. Ging wrestle him down? And oh, there yeah. comes the football. It clearly comes out, and Steven Ravel is there to make the recovery for the future is bright, and the present right now as well. Back up to you guys. Kellen Moore going up top for Avery. God damn it! He's got it! Look at Kellen Moore. So poised as the pocket's collapsing, and a catch in double coverage. Triple Unbelievable. coverage. Unbelievable by Jeremy Childs. Jeremy Childs, this is the reason why he was... All whack last year. He times his leap. It looks like they're going to review it. He's under review. Watch this catch. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah, it looks like he has his it. left arm under it. Look at the timing of that leap by Childs. Uh, you can't tell from that angle perfectly, but, you know, he comes up with it cradled. This might be the better look. Has it in control, knees down, in control. He's got to have that left hand under the ball. Yeah. And and uh, whether he did or not, it's not uh, irrefutable evidence to say that he did not. <laughs> After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Rockle goes into the tight end position. Ian Johnson, the lone setback. Back to Young. Moore. The pass back. O'Neill to the five. Broncos. Great deception after the play action here by Moore. He had Titus Young crossing on the fly sweep. The fake and a great spin move inside. At the Oregon six yard line. Johnson. 
Touchdown, Broncos, Ian Johnson. Five carries for six yards. Then he busted into the end zone for his 50th career touchdown as a Bronco. Broncos trying to extend their lead to 17-6, and it is perfect. Grotzman boots it. Crenshaw looks at Look, just fly over his head. Johnson, no, check that one across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Pete said that Max Unger, Unger, the duck center, is the best center in Division I football. He is also uh, the nephew of a uh, PE teacher at River Glen Junior High in Boise. My son Mark's uh, PE teacher, Tom Unger. From Honolulu, Hawaii. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Out of the shotgun. Blunt. Blunt across the 35 to the 36 yard line, and that's a gain of 15. To see why the Ducks are going to be content to do that. First man to get there, Kyle Ging. He sheds them, sheds Tim Brady. 10 carries already, 83 yards for Blunt. Why not? This time he's taken down. Second down and seven now. Both teams working out of the no huddle. That's the MO for a lot of offenses around the country, especially west of the Mississippi. Blunt. Oh, taken down, hit hard. George Iloka. Look at Iloka. Third and eight. Keeper. Throws it away. I know you questioned me saying Broncos in control as we went into that last break, but really the momentum right now, Broncos right now are in control. Vinny Peretta at his own 22. Peretta to the 27-yard line and with 5.52 left to play. Well, you saw the sign on the, the shirt, yell, and that's exactly what the Ducks fans are doing right now. Complete, and that is... Titus Young with his catch, and he's got a 12-yard gain, and that's a Bronco first down. Moore throwing it where only Young can get it, and, and Young sliding to the turf. First down for the Broncos. 42-yard line. 5.30 left to play in the first half. Jeremy Avery hit and knocked down. In the shotgun is Kellen Moore, who has looked so poised today. Here they come. Gets it away, incomplete, and they were... Coming on the blitz on Kellen Moore. He had to get rid of that in a hurry. Jerome Boyd was the first one who got to him. Yeah, the theme today for Kellen Moore is to set your feet and deliver in a hurry. He had no choice that time. Thomas Bird was one on two. Got to get to the 47. Here they come. Complete with cornerback Willie Glasper. Jerome Boyd again putting the pressure on Kellen Moore getting a hit on you know and Kellen Moore Tom knew that he was going to get hit delivered a perfect strike and then turned and just let his pads take the blow and look at that celebration there at the end of the play <laughs> first down he is having by fun. Kellen Moore he the is having fun and look at this offensive lineup five re receivers to the right Child. knocked out at the 44 yard line that's only a pickup of about three yards that's the uh, most creative two-yard gain of the day. 4 left to go before the break. Second and eight now for the Broncos. Torrey at the 44-yard line. Empty backfield for Kellen Moore. Great protection here for Kellen Moore. Efa, who weighed 195 yards when he came out of Capitol High, now at 228, very athletic, and in the Bronco passing game. Some people wondered whether he was going to play basketball or football at Boise State. Third down and three. A long two. Brockle trying to move the pile, and they are going to go for it with the clock running at 3.12 left in the half. It's fourth and two. You know, it's a, it's a long one, Tommy. It's not quite two yards. Offensive line against defensive line. Who's going to win? More. Throws it all alone. That's e -Fong. Down to the three-yard line is Kyle Ifa. Watch Kellen Moore. It looked like they he was faking everybody that up. he had fumbled the ball. Kept it low across the ground. Leaves Ian Johnson in the block, and Ifa streaks. 
They've scored 17 unanswered points at the Broncos since going behind 6-0 early. That's DJ Harper to the three. Jeremy Child splits out right to the right side. Brockle in motion. Faked it, Johnson. Touchdown, Broncos! What a you great think? bunch of play calling from this Bronco offensive coordinator, Brian Harson. And once again, you see the swinging gate on the point after. They're going to snap it, trying for the 24th unanswered points for the Broncos. And it is good. Good shot at the 10. To the 40. At their own 39 yard line. Oregon scored first. That's the keeper. And racked down at the 43 yard line. Second and five. Johnson. Cross midfield. Jeremiah Johnson down to the 39 yard line. Robert here is 49 and on cable channel 28. Quick, quickly back, that's Chris Harper, and he's knocked out, and that's going to stop the clock with a minute eight to go here in the opening half. How huge would it be for the Bronco D to end the half with only six? That's Jeremiah Johnson chased by King. He's knocked out at the 47 yard line. They've only thrown it a handful of times today. Third down and long for the Ducks. Harper now will throw over the middle. Incomplete. Brandon Thompson was all over the intended target, Jason Williams. Plenty of time there for Harper. Brandon Thompson had the pass broken up by Offside. Jason Williams. Defense number 98 lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. At the 39-yard line, Harper. Still on the move is Harper. Across the 30, he's got the first down. Into Bronco territory, down across the 20 to the 19-yard line is where they're going to stop it. Jerron Johnson finally knocked him out. I think this will be one of those plays where the coaches in the booth for Oregon are going, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, because he, he didn't give the play a chance as he danced early, but great run by Chris Harper. And Harper stays in there. Gives it to Blunt. Blunt is stopped at the 17, and he will be stopped there with only a gain of about one. And the clock now, as soon as they mark the ball, there is a timeout, so Oregon has taken the timeout with 38 seconds. Chris Peterson talking this week about how Mike Bellotti was his mentor when he was here as the wide receivers coach. We asked him if he was going to exchange pleasantries with Bellotti before the game, and he said, no. He, he has seen a lot of uh, old friends over here, but he has really distanced himself from nostalgia and history as he coached here as a wide receivers coach from 1995 to 2000. Brought in with Dan Hawkins in 2001. Christine Bellotti tried to hire him back as offensive coordinator over the last five years. And each time he came calling, Chris Peterson took the call but said politely, no, thank you. I'm happy where I am right now. It's worked out. Well, for both sides, is uh, the Oregon is uh, very satisfied with Chip Kelly out of the University of New Hampshire as its O-coordinator. Second down. Call it nine yards. 40 seconds left to go in the first half. Keeper. Over the middle. Picked off. Kyle Wilson at the one. The junior from Piscataway, New Jersey. Ended last week with an interception, and he ends the first half with an interception. Second turnover of the day forced by the Broncos. What, it's a very similar catch to the one he made against Bowling Green last week. Second turnover of the day forced by the Broncos. Look at the passing game for Oregon today. Three for six for only 27 yards and an interception. More on the keeper. Second and eight. Broncos looking to go into the first half locker room up 24-6. Kellen Moore behind center. Ian Johnson will grind out a couple. And Oregon will stop the clock again with 27 seconds left. He elects to hand it off, and the Broncos are going to be able to run out this first half clock. Oregon cannot stop it. And the Broncos will go into the locker room. And no, Buster Bronco, you are not dreaming. And that's Crenshaw with a seam 
Crenshaw knocked out at the 39-yard line, but good field position to begin the second half. And there are the first half drives by Oregon. The second one was a beauty, 14 for 80 yards. And then they had a three-yard punt, a fumble, another punt, and an interception to end the half. And it will be Chris Harper back in at quarterback to start the second half. And both Blunt and Jeremiah Johnson in the backfield for the Ducks. The sun is out here at Otson. The ball is at the 41-yard line of the Broncos. Looked like a broken play. Harper taken down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was looking for somebody to give it to. We're going to have to get David Augusto to find out what's wrong with Jeremiah Masoli. We understand he sustained a head injury in the first half. No sign of him right now, so it's Chris Harper. It's his ballgame. Harper gives to Jeremiah Johnson. He's going to pick up only about three as a host of Broncos bring him down after a short gain, bringing up a third. Boy, this Oregon team with a history of injured quarterbacks. And once again, they find themselves without one today. Trapped and gets away only momentarily. Taken down and lost of two yards. Had one punt for a net three yards. Peretta is deep. This one is high. Peretta under it at the 15. Fields it, and it's a fair catch at his own 11-yard line. The Broncos will take over. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this Oregon Duck team has been hit by a Bronco right now. And that man is the reason. Kellen Moore in the shotgun. Incomplete. Look at the Broncos' first half drives. Yeah, it started inauspiciously for the Broncos. Punt, punt. Five-yard penalty. Replay. First down. David, what can you tell us about Jeremiah Masoli? He has suffered a very mild concussion. Doesn't look to be serious, but he will not play again today. So he's out of the game. Actually, Masoli is out of uniform. So we'll see. It's first and 15 for the Broncos. Kellen Moore. Batted at the line and knocked. Second and 15 for the Broncos. Again, Moore in the shotgun. Intercepted. That is Talmadge Jackson, the third on the pick, and the first interception of the year for Kellen Moore, an ill-advised throw. And that could be a game changer for the University of Oregon. Certainly a momentum changer. The ball partially deflected as he was trying to get it out to Jeremy Childs. First turnover of the game for the Broncos. And that's Chris Harper again with Masoli still out on the keeper. Harper, he'll pick up three. But that's about it. Jerron Johnson was the first one to get to him. But Tom, you know, Bellotti this week was a little testy when the question was asked of all of the quarterbacks, five of them now six injured in the last three seasons. He was a little testy, but there's another example of it. These guys are going down. Johnson. He will walk in. Jeremiah Johnson and after the turnover makes quick work and they cut the Bronco lead to 24 12 pending the extra point. Well, that was just speed to the outside by Jeremiah Johnson he hesitates good block on Ellis Powers Brandon Thompson can't match that Evenson on for the point after and it is once again an 11 point game Jeremy Avery, five yards deep, and he will elect to keep it. And there you see Jeremiah Johnson on the sidelines after a very quick scoring drive, Tom. Well, that would be two plays, 19 yards, and 33 seconds after the interception by Jackson. 18-yard run by Jeremiah Johnson. First and 10 for the Broncos at the 20. Johnson. Finds a small seam off tackle. He'll pick up four. It'll be second and six at the Broncos 24 yard line. Second possession of the second half. Fake. Pockets. Hit and knocked down immediately by Jerris Bird. One on one with Jerris Bird, and Bird wins that battle. Now the crowd is back in the game. Nice play action there. Third down, they give him a pickup of one, so call it third and four. In the shotgun is Kellen Moore, standing at his own 21-yard line. 
This crowd has come to life. Peretta. He will walk into the end zone. The senior, Vinny Peretto, touchdown Broncos. That time, Vinny Peretta started in the backfield, split out, was isolated on linebacker Casey Matthews. Matthews could not match the speed of Vinny Peretta, and it's a 75-yard touchdown. Once again, they start in the swinging gate. They don't get the matchup they want, so they elect to kick it. Vinny Peretta on the sidelines. Acknowledging the fans who have made this trip over. Trying to make it 31 to 13. Rotsman is perfect. Chung. Knocked off his feet at the 30. Patrick Chung. So Chris Harper, the true freshman from Wichita, Kansas, is the quarterback. At the beginning of the season, he was number four on the depth chart. Blunt tries to get to the 40, but they'll spot it at the 39-yard line. Ed Dixon, who caught uh, seven passes last week for 93 yards, the tight end for Oregon, has only one catch today. Look at the yardage difference in passing. Blunt again. And he is going to be close to the first down. It depends on the mark. Now, now if, if, uh, if Harper goes down, they would either have to go to Andre Crenshaw as an emergency backup or burn the redshirt year of freshman Darren Thomas. Harper in the shotgun with Blunt's his back, and Blunt has it. He's got the first down and maybe a couple more across the 45 to the 46-yard line. But first and 10 for the Ducks at their own. 47 yard line. Blunt. And he stopped. Ryan Winterswijk is the uh, the first one to get to him. But again, Tom, you're going to play power football against the Broncos and keep the clock running when you're up 31 to 13. That's just fine. Well, they think they have the size advantage against a smaller Bronco defensive line. Purdue's defensive line was big, and they did wear Purdue down eventually last week. In motion is male, but the give is to Jeremiah Johnson. Billy Wynn. And look at Billy Wynn. Let's see what happens here. Broncos stay in their base defense. Harper taken down by Ellis Powers. As he comes to the sideline, well, we'll have to watch Ellis Powers. Look at the hit by Ellis Powers. Could be a shoulder judged by the shot he put. Oh, Syree almost had that blocked. Peretta says, let that go, and they're going to mark it. It went out of bounds at the 27. He's still walking almost to the 30-yard line. The Bronco Nation that made this trip, uh, right now they're having a lot of fun. They heard the horror stories about how ugly this place can be and how loud this place can be. Sideline interference. We have not had to worry about that today. Team. Penalty will be enforced as a dead ball foul, five yards. First down. Sideline, yep. that's the there, first of the year for that. There are no warnings this year. First down, Broncos at their own 24-yard line. There's motion. Free play. Up the middle goes D.J. Harper. That was a free play because uh, Oregon had moved. Could have been Nick Reed. Offside. Offside. Defense, Defense, number 49. Yep. Penalty will be enforced for the end of the run. First down. Johnson, the lone running back. Whoa, fly sweep to Jeremy Avery. He fumbles, looks like uh, Jeremy Childs recovered. Let's take a look at this again. On the fly sweep, Avery full speed and a full speed hit there from TJ Ward. Brockle in motion. Johnson behind Richie Brockle and he'll, he'll lose a yard. Yeah, more on that sideline interference penalty against Boise State. This year, you can't have any players at all on that white surface on the sidelines and they're not giving any warnings. So that was an automatic penalty. Coach Peterson not happy about it. Strength coach Tim Saha, who is a stalwart here on the sidelines, pumping up the team, made a clean sweep from one end of the bench to the other, <laughs> pushing everybody back, making sure it doesn't happen again. Vinny Peretta, you see at the bottom of your screen, who scored the last touchdown, splits out wide to the right. Chris O'Neill is the H-back. Avery. To the 50, 40, makes a move. Down to the 26-yard line goes Jeremy Avery. 
Great job by John God and Kevin Sapien to get to the outside and start that play. Nice block by Chris O'Neill there. Moore behind center now. Johnson. Johnson gets a good gain to the 20-yard line. That's a pickup of six. They were 10-point underdogs, according to the so-called experts. But they have come in, and after spotting Oregon a 6-0 lead, have been in control. Second and five. Ian Johnson waits for his blockers. Tried to get the first down. It looks like his knee touched down at about the 18-yard line, and it'll be That's third right. and two. They'll start the clock now, 5.03 to go. That's a new rule in college football, too, this year. As soon as they spot the ball, no matter if the guy is going out of bounds, they start the clock. That favors Boise State right now. D.J. Harper, the lone setback. Fake to Harper. Complete David. To the 10. First and goal, Broncos. And now, Jeremy Avery comes in there in what looks like a power running game here. Double tight ends. Avery spinning. Gets to the original line of scrimmage and not much more and it'll be second and goal at the moment. As Moore goes into the shotgun now, you throw the playbook at the Ducks. Jeremy Avery, fake fly sweep, middle pitch and again no gain. Jeremy Childs splits out wide to the right side. As does Austin Pettis. Vinny Peretta goes out to the left side. Third and goal to nine. Peretta dropped it at the four. Rotsman from the 16. And it is perfect. Chris Harper, and there was a fumble. He dropped the ball. Second and 13. Harper. Now they're going to start throwing. Maybe. Sacked a little bit. And the Broncos are in the nickel defense right now. Dropping safeties into coverage. Intercepted Kyle Wilson. Oregon coaches will tell you that Chris Harper just doesn't know the offense well enough yet and doesn't see the field well enough yet. Did not see Kyle Wilson lurking. And the Broncos have a chance to add on here. Great protection here for Harper. But boy, an ill, talk about an ill-advised throw. Broncos in business again, up 34-13 with 124 to go. As you see Coach Mike Bellotti on the sidelines talking and conferring with his young quarterback. Moore. Oh, and Chris O'Neill was open and didn't see the play developing, was waiting out of the shotgun. Delay to Ian Johnson. Johnson across the 20 and finally stopped. Huge third down and seven for the Broncos. At the duck 17-yard line, more in the shotgun. Empty backfield. Steps up. Avery. Incomplete. 34-yard attempt for Rodsman. And Mr. Automatic is perfect once again. Chung, who takes it his own three. Chung with a C. Rotsman doesn't get him. To the 40, knocked out at the 36-yard line. We were talking about Patrick Chung, and the reason why Ian Johnson is at Boise State is because of that man. Yeah, after a misfire on his last kickoff return, he had a gap up the middle. Here you get the end zone shot. Great blocking by the special teams. And Kyle Brotsman missing the tackle there. Jamar Taylor finally ran him out. And if the Ducks are going to start this uh, comeback, got to be right now with this field position on the Boise State 36 yard line. And they are going to burn the red shirt here now of Damon Thomas. Yep, he is a true freshman. Damon gonna, Thomas. Yes, they're going to burn the red shirt, shirt year, and that's uh, Jeremiah Johnson. But we had talked about this yesterday. If if there was an injury or if there was something going on that Coach Mike Bellotti didn't like, he was going to burn Darren Johnson's redshirt year, and that, in fact, has happened. Yeah, the only exception to that...
would have been if uh, if the Ducks were way ahead, they could have put in Andre Crenshaw as a, an emergency quarterback. Quite a story developing here in Eugene. Broncos up 37-13 to begin the fourth quarter. Boise State up 37-13, and a new quarterback hands off to Jeremiah Johnson, and he is wrestled out of bounds after a gain of three. Darren Thomas is the true freshman from Aldean High School in Houston, Texas. True freshman, Tom Scott, and once again, quarterback injuries, the storyline for the Ducks. And they're going to have to keep it pretty simple with Thomas in here, although he has been learning the offense. Brock goes up 37-13. 13.43 left to play. And again, more out of the shotgun. Johnson to the 45. Short game. Look, look, you never know whether Coach Chris Peterson is ahead or behind. He's got the same demeanor. Carpenter hit hard after a gain of about three. And it'll be third down and call it a long five, maybe six. Broncos with a hefty lead here of 37-13. Again, Oregon scoring the first touchdown of the game. But after that, it has been all Boise State. Third and call it seven for Kellen Moore. Steps into the pocket. Complete. Peretta has the first down. And Vinny Peretta is still there. Peretta is not moving. Great job by Moore here to yeah, see the field. The right oh. down on that right shoulder, too. And while uh, while Vinny was injured and they were watching over him, they did review the play. The ball came loose as he hit the turf. And so Boise State will be forced to pass. move by the Ducks to uh, take their helmets off and kneel down about uh, 15 yards away while Vinny was motionless on the turf. Broncos have... Owned the lead since midway through the first quarter. Brotsman, patented step kick. Ball takes a bounce at the 5. Bird at the 15. 20. Down to the 22-yard line, Jarris Bird. You see Bird wearing number 29 today in, or, in honor of Todd Doxey. There, have been some, there has been some hitting out there, and that is the true freshman, Derek Thomas. Ducks will throw it. All alone is Dixon. Has it at the 40. That's the junior tight end, Ed Dixon, that we were talking about that was such an integral part of the Ducks offense last week. That's only his second catch of the day. Yeah, we thought we were going to see him a lot today, but the Ducks haven't been able to use that facet of their passing game with Jeremiah Masoli going down with a head injury in the first half. And again... Darren Dixon burning his red shirt because of the injury to Masoli. And then Harper also ineffective and also a bit cobbled. Incomplete intended for Jason Williams, who had a step, but a little bit too much air under it for Darren Thomas. One play ago, this is the Dixon catch. This kid's 6'5", 243 pounds, and look at that crowd. Well, he had split the zone between George Iloka and Brandon Thompson. Second and 10 now at the Bronco 38-yard line. Broncos up 37-13. There's Williams. That's a gain of 12. The fans think they may have found their man. The Broncos get pressure late from Ryan Winterswike. Thomas goes underneath to Nate, Williams, and the Ducks are moving. Nate Costa, the intended starter, injured. Justin Roper, the fill-in, injured. And today, Masoli across the middle for Mayo. Touchdown, Jeff Mayo. Broncos in a zone, and Jeff Mayo got Pascal Zing into the soft spot. Great vision by Darren Thomas to see that. That was an easy pitch and catch and a quick six for Oregon. And you see the reaction of Darren Thomas and the catch by Mayo. And the extra point is good. And the Bronco lead has been cut to 17 points. 
There's still time left on the clock, 11.06 to go. This is still a ball game here in Eugene. We're going to find out in 11 minutes and 6 seconds if this is going to be a historic day for the Bronco football program. Jeremy Avery lets it go over his head, and the Broncos will take over first and 10 at the 20. Boise State needs to get a sustained drive, Tom. Kellen Moore has been calm, as we mentioned today, all day long. 22 out of 33, 351 yards and three touchdowns. He's behind center. Give to Ian Johnson. Off tackle, gets a couple. O'Neal splits out wide right along with Austin Pettis on the second down and eight. Moore. Middle screen, Johnson is wrapped up. John God gets up very slowly for the Broncos, number 76. Great job by Moore to look downfield and then make the flip, but the Ducks were not cool. Big third down play here in this ball game. Huge for the Broncos. They do not want to turn it back over to the true freshman, Darren Thomas, who moved the Ducks down the field effortlessly on their last possession. Third and eight. In trouble, sacked, Crackles will punt. He's been stepping up into the pocket well all day. This time could not elude the shirt tackle of the great defensive end from Trabuco Canyon, California. Jarris Bird, we mentioned it in the first half. He was so critical in the win last week at Purdue with a big punt return for a touchdown. He's gonna get a chance to bring one back. Scotsman at his own six. There's a flag down. Bird at the 40. Hit and brought down at the 50, but let's see what this flag is. Yeah, the ball spotted right at midfield. And, and uh, now Bellotti is saying formation. we want to back them up. Offense. Six men on the line. Receiving team is elected to have that penalty enforced at the previous spot. Five yards. Replay fourth down. Mike Bellotti didn't like midfield. He says we can do better than that. Jarris Bird waits at his own 45. Another low kick. And it hits out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and that was actually a break for the Broncos. And now the Bronco defense has to regenerate some energy here. And look at Darren Thomas here. This is how cool he's been. He's throwing his first passes as a D1 quarterback. Last year he was playing Fridays down in a high school in Houston. Ducks got to wonder if they redshirted the right quarterback back at the end of fall camp. Thomas in the shotgun. First and ten Ducks across the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Terrence Scott. It'll be second and ten. Three down linemen and the nickel for Boise State. Thomas up the middle. Caught. Terrence Scott in traffic. And he was well covered and still brought it down. Kyle Gay was all over it. Timing hit by Jerron Johnson. But to no avail. Great catch. Look at those stats on the season. He is the deep threat for Oregon. And this is a much different Oregon Duck offense than the one we saw in the first half that was grinding it out. Thomas again. That ball overthrown to Jason Williams. He needed to be about 12 feet tall to bring that down. As Mike T. Williams was coming off the right side, good protection that time. Look at that catch as Jerron Johnson gets there at the same time. And they uh, looking for a big stop here. Complete to Mayo. Down to the Bronco 18-yard line. Jeff Mayo, the sophomore who was the defensive back last year for the Ducks, moved to offense this year, and that's why. Once again, Mayo finds the soft spot. Kyle Ging on the stop. The Broncos lining up with three defensive linemen and huge splits along the defensive front. LeGarrette Blount in the backfield, but right now with Darren Thomas slinging this football, it doesn't appear as if they're going to go on the ground. Blitz was on. Thomas is hit. 
and brought down for a, ga a loss of about two. It was blitzing there, and it worked. That's a quick six of ten for 121 yards Top and a set. touchdown for Darren Thomas. That is an understatement. He just six. burned his redshirt year. And maybe for good reason for Mike Bellotti. Second and 11. Thomas into the end zone. He wants Dixon. Touchdown. Ed Dixon, we were just talking about it, Tommy. That's the guy that you really have to watch out for. He's such a huge target. And listen to this crowd now. They know their team is back in it. Yeah. Ducks have made it a two-possession game. Great time. The, the Duck offensive line is inspired right now as Dixon gets behind Jerron Johnson. Trying to cut the back lead to 10. Oh, and it hits the upright. Once again, Jeremy Avery will take it at the 20. And that's a good point, Tom, because uh, as David just mentioned, critical right now for the Broncos to win this ball game and do it right now with a sustained drive. And that's what the huddle is all about on the BSU sideline. Once again, as Austin Stadium comes to life. Now, it will be the loudest of the day now. Broncos need some first downs. This will be the biggest challenge of Kellen Moore's young rookie Division I quarterback career. Power football right here for the Broncos on the first and 10 at their own 20. Fake to Harper. He wants Childs. Complete. Look at this circus catch, Tom Scott. He just throws it up for Childs. Look at the timing of Childs' leaps. He's done that three times today. Twice he's come down with the ball. Broncos now in a duck territory at the 45-yard line. 6.53 left to go in this game. Fumble. Ducks football. Cole Linehan gets on top of the missed connection between Thomas Bird and Kellen Moore, and the Ducks are back in business. You ever seen a team with more momentum than the uh, University yeah. of Oregon right now? Yeah, the Broncos in the second quarter. No chance there for Kellen Moore nor Thomas Bird after the fumbled snap. And Darren Thomas, the man of the day for the Ducks. Folks, there's 6.47 left on this clock. Broncos hanging on to this 11-point lead. There is a ton of time. Darren Thomas. Whistle. And a flag. Pass interference. Defense. Number 18. Ball replaces. Final foul. First down. Yeah, that's definitely Brandon Thompson. Thomas again in the shotgun. He's got everybody in this pass pattern. Broncos trying to get pressure into traffic. Complete to Terrence Scott to the 34-yard line. The Brandon Bron Thompson on the coverage. Broncos just cannot stop Darren Thomas. They're trying to get pressure on him. They've gone back to a four-man front. Ball thrown high. Terrence Scott goes and gets it. Much different offense again in the second half than we saw in the first for the Ducks. And this man is one of the reasons. Darren Thomas is sacked. Second and 18. They call it a loss of eight. Moves the ball back to the 39-yard line. Out of field goal range. They're not thinking field goal here, though. Over the middle for Dixon. Almost oh. intercepted by Gerard Johnson, who yeah. dove for that. Third and 18 for the Ducks from the Bronco 39-yard line. Boise State up by 11. It is a two score. Thomas, 8 of 13, 150 yards in one quarter. <laughs> Here we go, everybody. Third down and 18. Incomplete. Now did the Ducks go for it? 557 left of the game, trailing by 11. Darren Thomas is not coming off the field. It would be a 56-yard field goal attempt. They need to get to the Boise State 21-yard line. They need a field goal, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion to tie. Mike T. Williams reaching back for something extra here in the fourth quarter. The Broncos hanging on, trying to make history. Ducks are going. 
You thought the last play was the play of the game? Here's the play of the game. Fourth and 18. Pressure. And the Broncos hold. Broncos sideline has come to life. Slapping high fives. And with 5.50 to go, there is a change of possession. After frustration here in the fourth quarter, the Broncos finally get pressure on Darren Thomas, and it pays off. Now with 5.50 left in the game, again, Boise State needs a couple first downs. Boy, we got a dandy going here. We got a dandy coming up tomorrow night, too. NFL on Sunday night. Packers at home against the Cowboys. That's coming up tomorrow night on NFL Sunday Night Football on Idaho's News Channel 7. Rappers at their own 27-yard line. Got stack in the box. 5.50 to play. Ian Johnson behind his tech blockers. Grinds out five very Johnson difficult yards. You can hear this crowd. Right it, now, four yards in a cloud of rubber pellets. Half of them standing. Kellen Moore says, no, guys, ship this way. Second and six. Harper. He finds not much, maybe one, and it'll be third and five. Now he shifts over to the right side, Kellen Moore, with the plays on his right wrist, third and five. In trouble. Over the middle and incomplete. Boise State hanging on to an 11-point lead. Jarris Bird has been waiting all day for this opportunity. Hasn't made the most of his previous attempts, but remember what he did last week against Purdue. Yeah, we do. Rotsman is zone 19. Hits a low one that bounces at the 40. Bird gets a chance at the 40. 35 chased by Brady to the 50, and he's knocked down at the 49 yard. 403 left to play in this football game in Eugene. Broncos up 37 26. Mail over his head. Just take a look at it again. Covered by George Iloka, who's running a, a little bit gingerly after that. He got hit by his own man at the end of the play, Jerron Johnson. Last three tosses for Darren Thomas have sailed high, and that could be the nerves being felt right now by the true red shirt. Now, those are whistles. I know that. Flags those are whistles. Down. Yes. The illegal procedure against the Ducks. Broncos in their base defense right now. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five-yard penalty, still second down. You see total yards, BSU with a narrow lead, 417 to 404. But you look at the breakdown between rush and pass, and it's just incredible. 31 yards rushing, and the Broncos lead by 11. Broncos hoping to stay unbeaten as they begin the conference season against La Tech coming up on October 1st. But they've got to get by these Ducks first. That pass is batted away, knocked down. Who else? Crowd wants something, but Ryan Winterswike knocked it away. Winterswike made the hit behind the line of scrimmage. And that is going to bring up a third down now for the Ducks. They're seeing it here on the screen. You are too. Yep. That's called blanket coverage by the sophomore. Ball at the 45-yard line of the Ducks. In traffic. Picked up. Thompson. Brandon Thompson to the 39-yard line. And there are late hits and penalty markers all over the field. But yep. the Broncos have got the football back with 3.47 to go. Yeah, Thompson fumbled. Then it looks like George Iloka got the ball. And now there's a ref down underneath this pile. Coach is out in the field trying to get some order restored here. They will obviously take a look at this one. But... Brandon Thompson stepped in front, picked it off, and brought it back into duck territory. The sophomore from Elk Grove with a huge play. And the officials talking about a very important call here, although the duck defense is on the field. Dead ball, personal foul. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Ruling on the field is under review. They're going to they're going to try to figure out here if this ball came loose before Brandon Thompson went down, but there were late hits afterwards, and that's the reason for the 15-yard penalty. They're taking a look at this right now. now. Either way, 
The ball will be marched 15 yards. Ball still in. Ball out. coming out. It's a fumble. George Iloka right there, and he is on it. He's on it. He's, he's on it. Yeah, he's down. He's, he's down. down. Yeah, he's down. so that's down. And now extracurricular activity breaks out in Hudson Stadium. Once again, Brandon Thompson, you see the ball coming out there, but look at number eight, George Iloka. Iloka. His knees are down. He's got he's the got ball. It. And he's down. That's so that's football. end of story. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, the 15-yard penalty for the personal foul will be enforced from the end of the run. First and 10 for the Broncos at the duck 25. Double tights. Johnson. Nowhere to go. There just have not been many. Oregon has taken a timeout here to stop the clock. Well, I, it's historic because it'll be the first road win if it happens over a Pac-10 team and a, a BCS team. But I think you just, with what's happened with the Boise State program the past few years, you just look at it in relevance to today. And today, if they get this win, the Broncos will be in the back, back in the top 25 for the first time since last November. And they will be in other conversations around the country. That's East right. Carolina has lost today. Ian Johnson gets across the 25. Jeremy Avery in the backfield. He's got the ball. Looking for a seam and gets down. To One last breath for Kyle Bratzman. No Ducks good. will need a touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal with the clock running. Look at this, the sixth possession of the fourth quarter. That's the most alarming thing for the University of Oregon. In comes the freshman, the true freshman, Darren Thomas, who burned his red shirt after the injury to Missouri. He wants Dixon, and Dixon is knocked out at about the 24. Short gain of only Yeah, just an update on uh, John Gott. He did go back in for that field goal try by Kyle Brotsman. He came off the field, the big offensive lineman from Canada, kind of rolled his shoulder a little bit and uh, said, hey, I'm good. Put me back in, coach. And so he should be good to go for the rest of the way. Second and seven for the Ducks. There's Dixon. To the 40 and knocked out. Dixon. They like him. Brandon Thompson playing soft. The Broncos playing pretty deep here in a prevent. And despite the fact he was knocked out again, the new rule, the clock continues to run. Thomas throws over the head of Dixon incomplete, and that will stop the clock momentarily at 2.52 to go. Second down and 10. Thomas over the middle. Scott. Scott. Picks up the first down, knocked out at the 47-yard line. Dixon and Scott Williams, also Mayo. Broncos backing up. Over the head, intended for Jason Williams, over his head. On the play was Jerron Johnson with the coverage. Yeah, Johnson taking his feet out from under him. The Broncos dropping deep. George Iloka that time. The safety was playing 16 yards off the line of scrimmage. He's even further than that now. Let's see where he lines up. He'll come up to about that distance. And you see now 222, 33 to go. There's Williams. Down to the 26-yard line goes Jason Williams. And the drive remains alive. Clock stops to move the chains at 227. Good protection this time for Scott as who a little bit of a gamble there. Nero nearly deflected. 27-yard line now for Darren Thomas. Over the middle. Oh, Dixon was hit hard and penalty markers go down. Ball well over Dixon's head. And Johnson get, getting there after the ball passes. Personal foul. Defense number 43. Targeting a defenseless player. Number 43 is ejected from the game for a flagrant foul. Hard to believe he's a true freshman, Tony. He settled down again. Thomas into the end zone. Almost picked off by a local. Second and ten. Thomas again. Over the middle and broken up and penalty markers go down. Brandon Thompson is going to be flagged. 
Pass interference. Defense, number 13. Ball replaced the spot of the foul. First down. Broncos with their four-man front desperately trying. Yeah, you see the right the hand Thompson. there. 12 of 24, 203 yards for Darren Johnson. And maybe a bigger number, two Darren of, Thomas. 211 left to go in this football game. Darren Thomas with the ball. In the end zone. Touchdown, Dixon. And get ready for the onside kick. Coming. Then they'll do the onside kick. If they don't get the two-point conversion, they can still score and win the game. Two-point conversion attempt coming up. Darren Thomas with the shotgun. Lots of motion on that line. Dixon moves into the right slot as the tight end. Over the head of Jason Williams. No good. So the Broncos have a five-point lead. And a field goal will not be good enough for the Ducks if they can get the ball back. 58,000 at Hudson Stadium know what's coming up. 58,713. Eight play, 79 yard drive after the missed field goal by Kyle Brotsman. Ducks used only a minute 19. Still plenty of time if they can get the ball back. If they can't, time for Boise State to run out the clock. They've got to guess what the Ducks are going to do. Once again, yeah, great, great pocket set up there. And a couple of Broncos knocked into each other at the goal line. Broncos up 37-32. Now they're showing that they're going to go to the right here. Kyle Epaw, Chris O'Neill, Jeremy Childs, the hands team on the field for Boise State. DJ Austin. Harper is the lone deep back coming. He's a safety valve. Onside kick attempt. Pettis. Austin Pettis came up with it at the 46-yard line. Broncos have the football. That might beat the biggest catch of Austin <laughs> Pettis' career. And there was no doubt about it. He wrapped both arms around it against the BCS team and come up with the upset. They can't kneel down yet. Johnson with a seam. Still on his feet to the 42-yard line goes Ian Johnson to pick up a five. Titus Young splits out to the left side. Moore behind center. Avery stopped at the line, knocked behind the, the line. The Broncos, barring a miracle, are going to end up with an upset win at Hudson Stadium. Harper to the 44. And that's it. And that is going to be it. <laughs>